What is REM or REM sleep? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Tifro. It's me Matt here and today we're talking about REM or REM sleep. So REM stands for rapid eye movement sleep and that is one of the main characteristics of REM sleep. During REM sleep, our eyes make some strange movements. They rapidly move around in all sorts of different directions. Alongside this, we also experience something called REM atonia, which is where our body paralyzes itself, probably to prevent us from acting out our dreams. The third and final main characteristic of REM is that this is where your dreams typically happen. Now you can have some vague sense of a dream outside of REM, and a lot of the time these are more hypnagogic in nature or more like out of body experiences and stuff like this. But your typical dreams, most of your dreams, you know, 99% of the dreams that you remember are all occurring in REM. During REM, we also have elevated levels of acetylcholine, which is a brain neurotransmitter that is also involved in feelings of being alert and awake and so on, which is why REM is a bit strange because REM is the one stage of sleep that behaves a bit like you're not asleep. Your brain is alert and very, very active. Your eyes are darting about back and forth. And if it wasn't for the fact that your body was completely paralyzed, you'd probably be getting up and doing all sorts of things as well. So REM is actually sometimes called paradoxical sleep for this reason, because you know it's nothing like the other stages of sleep. So why should you be interested in REM if you're a lucid dreamer and you're on this channel? Well, because that is where most of your lucid dreams happen. Now, I did make a video recently that you may or may not have seen uh, where I talked about whether or not you actually need to be in REM to have a lucid dream. And there was an interesting study that suggested that you can have other types of lucid dreams in different stages of sleep. However, these different types of lucid dreams will be very different. For example, if you get lucid during deep sleep, you're not gonna see anything, you're not gonna be inside some dream world. What you're gonna experience is the void of you being asleep with no dreams. You're gonna be aware during that, but you're not gonna actually dream anything. So whether or not you call that a lucid dream is a matter that's kind of a bit up for debate. I also theorized in that video that Dreams or lucid dreams that occur during stage one and stage two sleep are likely responsible for astral projection and out of body experience type experiences. And because during those stages, you do not have REM atonia, you do not have the paralysis of the muscles that you get during REM sleep. So it's natural that to actually dream during that stage, we would have to move around without trying to use our muscles, without trying to use our body. So perhaps that is why our brain created these types of experiences where you leave the body behind, uh, where you move without one. In REM, on the other hand, when you try to move about in a dream, your body tries to move, but it is paralyzed and so it can't. You're sending signals to those muscles as if you were moving them, but they're not moving because it's paralyzed. If you didn't have REM atonia, you would get yourself seriously hurt because you start running in a dream and guess what? You start running in real life. And sometimes REM atonia can kind of break and mess up and that's often probably why you experience things like having a falling dream and then falling out of bed. So when does REM occur? Well, REM as a stage of sleep typically occurs around 90 minutes into your sleep cycle. So once you've been asleep for around 90 minutes, that's usually when your first REM period occurs. Now it actually occurs again 90 minutes later and 90 minutes later and so on. So approximately every 90 minutes of sleep. It's important to know that everyone's sleep cycles vary and also they vary based on your state at the time. For example, if you've consumed alcohol or other medications or drugs, then that's gonna influence when those periods actually happen. If you've been up for a long time, that's gonna influence when your REM periods are. If you just woke up after a nap, that's gonna influence when your REM periods are. So for example, actually uh, getting up in the middle of the night in an REM period and then going back to sleep, you will quickly re-enter REM, which is why most lucid dreaming methods work the way they do. You get up during an REM period, you go back to sleep or you perform a certain method and you don't immediately resume REM the second that you fall back asleep. You do still go through stage one sleep and so on, but you enter REM very, very quickly because your brain remembers where you were. So typically if you're trying to hit REM, you go to sleep for about 90 minutes, three hours, four hours, 30, six hours, seven hours, 30, so on, any multiple of 90. And if you're trying to perform a technique then, then you get up and within an hour or so you perform whatever technique it is. 
And of course, this always ends up when you're going back to sleep if you're intending to drink. Anyway, I hope you found this informative. And if you're interested in lucid dreaming and learning how to lucid dream for yourself, I have a 14 part audio course, which is called Advanced Lucidity. I'll put a link to it at the top of the screen where you can find out more. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe down there. And if you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon page. Be sure to subscribe before the end of the month if you actually want to get in on next month's round of Patreon subscribers. And if you want to keep watching, pick one of the videos on screen, go watch that, and I'll see you soon. Take care.